job. Right, so <laughs> are we are still on the Ouija board. <laughs> <laughs> we'll finish with the Ouija board now. <laughs> Ouija board. Ah, you see this. But we must, <laughs> must give a warning though. That's uh, if I mean a Ouija boards exist. Yeah. You know they exist. So personally, I, I mean, you may endorse this. I would say that if you are interested in an Ouija board, I would contact somebody who's an expert on yeah. them. Somebody who knows what they're doing. Definitely, but there's a lot of people who even who know it that never recommend doing one. Do you know what I mean? If if, if you're interested in doing it. Don't you? You don't need to do it, really. It, it's more like I'd never ever endorse Ouija boards because I've had that many bad experiences and stuff. But if maybe we go to a spiritualist church and say, "Listen, does anyone here want to help me?" Or do you know what I mean? But and I've had I've had too many bad experiences with it, yeah. so especially given warnings from the future as well. The bottom line is, leave them alone. Leave them be. <laughs> <laughs> don't because I don't want any more complaints. <laughs> Yeah, there's a little story that I, I picked up on, and it's regarding Sefton Park, you now over over my way, Liverpool. And it's it, there's a couple a couple who met up and used to meet on the bridge every Friday, but one Friday, this is the long story short by the way, one Friday they met up and his name was James. He said to his his lover, "Listen, I've got to marry this woman for wealth." Now she was heartbroken. He said, but I'll always love you. He said, meet me on this bridge at quarter past 11 next Valentine's Day and we'll run away together. Now, a year passed on and he turned up on that bridge. Nowhere to be seen. His lover was and he was waiting and waiting. And the next day, a friend caught up with him and he was saying about, you should have met Kathleen last night and she, she never turned up. But within that year, she died of fever. I never got the chance to meet him. But there's a lot of reports that said that it, she's seen and he's seen on the bridge together. Mm. We're talking about an anniversary ghosts earlier on. Apparently around quarter past 11 on Valentine's night. The time you should have met the scene. This has like been reported in local press and stuff. But I'm going to have a little look myself to see if I've seen him. But <coughs> Sorry. Apparently it, it's a reoccurring, reoccurring thing because she died before she could get back with him. And he could, I think he... I'm not too sure whether he took his own life or he died as well. Yeah. But apparently the, every Valentine's Day at quarter past 11 they meet. Which is quite sad when you think about it. It's nice, but... I, and I, I think this time I'm going to try and check it out myself because there's been that many reports. I'm just reporting something that... On Valentine's night we know where you'll be. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. On the bridge, on my own, <laughs> with my camera and my thousand rods. Yeah, well, as I say, you know, I mean, they may, um, they may appear too. You know, they may even acknowledge that you're there. That you're there. Yeah. It'd be, I mean, it's quite. I look at t stories like that, and it's it, it's sad, but it's nice in a way, especially if you believe in everlasting love and yeah. love carries on and stuff. But I mean, it's like the, the old man on the bus. I just wish I was still on the buses. I mean, I've been tempted actually to, to get that bus, but it, I don't think it would work now because if I was to get that actual bus, the only the passenger won't work because the bus was empty. He was the only passenger apart from me and my wife who were on the bus. Yeah. Um, so I don't think it, it would work. But um, I'd say it was just strange that it happened to other people and they were sort of, other drivers were. They didn't. They thought to be laughed at. They thought about this old guy who gets on the bus and never gets off, you know. And when it did come to light, I said, "I didn't leave monkeys, man." You know, I, yeah. I was just talking to my mate, and he said about this. And he said, "They happen to you as well, well you, and you." And then somebody else piped up and said, "You talking about that old man?" And, and all of a sudden, they all opened up and said, "We didn't have to say anything before, you know." Like, <laughs> you know fool. And then we ended up, it was about four or five of us sitting around talking about this. And they all described him. And what we did, um, we got a piece of paper in and they said, just, just write down the description of what he was doing. Yeah. And then they all kind of, um, a little guy, he's about five foot, five, five, six, uh, with a trilby, um, a longish coat, uh, and his umbrella. Yeah. And he always showed his bus pass. And, uh, good evening, driver. Because 
never took my pants off. Yeah. But, um, you know, he just wasn't sure his pants. But, so I know a guy like that. Even so and I thought, I wonder if, if it's worked today, because it's all, you show your passion, you have to rub it on the top, don't you? Well, and, we do now, yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean, so, so yeah. I wonder if anyone's seen him today, especially because he, he'd have an old style pass, so, wouldn't he? Yeah. So he wouldn't be able to get on it, so well, maybe. It was a, a blue pension pass. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Of course now you have a... Like a travel plastic, card. Yeah. yeah, so... No, don't. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought of that. I never yeah. thought of that because the passes. The passes have changed, have changed and. Yeah. So uh, probably he's got to find some other way of getting to New Brighton. <laughs> I'll have to. Yeah, I'll ring up and see if anyone's had an umbrella through at them. Because <laughs> he won't let them on. Yeah, I never, never thought of that. But, uh, what would have happened when they changed the bus passes? Uh-huh. But, uh huh. You never know, he may just have. Uh, he may have updated. <laughs> Yeah, but it's, it, it was just so strange, you know. So we, the first time it threw us, and the second time I thought it's not going to throw me this time. And I made sure he did not get upstairs, and he sat downstairs. And it was just when he got off the bus, I mean, he was slow. He was about five or six seats back, and it took him a few seconds to to get up and, and make his way to the front of the bus. And then he says, "Good night, miss. Good night, driver." When he gets off the bus, you know, is it? you imagine an old guy that gets off the bus. And within literally seconds of him getting off, Joan gets off the bus behind him and he's gone. He's gone, he's disappeared. He couldn't have even reached the back of the bus by then. That's like, where'd he go? You know, it's just amazing that he disappeared. I wonder if anyone's ever, because that's what I said I was going to look into before you, didn't I? Yeah. But that's what I was saying in the week. I'm currently writing stories open to finish my book. I've been writing a book for a while. But I mean, there's any little interest in any story, you know what I mean? It's always great yeah. to find them out. If I can, um, if I can see any of my old colleagues, um, I'll, I'll give them your number. I've got if your you can. Number. I'll give them your number.